of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, today we would like to have a meditation on the authentic worship towards liberation. Worship towards liberation. I shall read a small passage from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 11 uh, and follow. Moses said to God, Who am I to go to Pharaoh and bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? I shall be with you, was the answer, and this is the sign by which you shall know that it is I who have seen you. After you have led the people out of Egypt, you are to offer worship to God on this mountain. Friends, would like to have a small prayer. Praise be to you, O Lord. All glory and worship, adoration to you, the most holy of the holies, revealed in our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, may we discern the truth in your word and draw us, Lord, to you to discover your holy presence with us in order that we bow down before you and worship you, to bring glory to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. As I already greeted you once again, I invite you to join this meditation which is a very uh, kind of uh, meaningful subject to all Christians for that matter. In fact, all humanity, whatever religion one embraces, would like to see some kind of space to worship his or her God. There are variety of mannerisms and patterns in worshiping each of their god or goddesses. <clears throat> there are, you know, people who go to worship the water in the sea. There are people who worship the trees and plants. <coughs> people who go to hills and climb the hills and try to discover the presence of God on the top of a mountain. Some people simply look at the void of the sky. And some people even look into the earth, the reality of our existence and base and worship the earth as goddess. In the midst of all these, <coughs> there was a historic moment when God called Moses to the burning bush, the still fire, and there was a conversation between him, Moses, and the living God. A conversation where Moses was trying to understand who uh, it was speaking to him. And he receives the answer, which is not just a name. When God said to Moses, I am who I am, Yahweh, Yahweh. And then he continues to say, the God of your fathers and a little bit of explanation, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob has sent me to you. And this is the kind of, uh, you know, if you, if somebody asks you, like Pharaoh, you tell that uh, I am God of your fathers. With this, uh, perhaps the very first moment to which Moses was drawn in the presence of that holy and still fire. And it was in the first instance in the Bible where God also advises and instructs Moses after you bring, the task was, the purpose of call of Moses was to bring people of Hebrews from the land of captivity in Egypt. And then he says, after you have led the people out of Egypt, after you redeem them and liberate them, the first thing you have to do is to Offer worship to God on this mountain. Worship, liturgia, from where the English word comes, liturgy. 
वर्ष द हिब्रू वर्ड शाखा शाखा इज टू बाउ डाउन एंड टू प्रोस्ट्रेट फॉर एडोरेशन शोइंग द अटमोस्ट वेनरेशन रेस्पेक्ट to the living god shakha the equivalent greek word is proskunio is to worship again the same meaning to bow down you know normally such thing has been done in the history only before the kings and then to show your respect to show your veneration but then when you realize that you are not going to do it to the humans even if they are kings god alone deserves you know the worship god alone deserves the worship and adoration it is in that context from the israeli background that god already designed a pattern and asks moses you bring them and after the liberation of course with the help of god the sea of reeds or red sea was divided and the people are brought out and then there was the very first thing that they did was to collect some stones put around them and the place was called gilgal you know it is the bitterness a bitter uh, memory where they begin to worship and later on we know that on every 50th day the jubilation jubilee eh yobel is the 50th day celebration of thanksgiving to bow down before god when you go through the scripture in the old testament the history of worship you know it uh, looks so interesting it was abraham who really mm, designed a new kind of pattern worship Abraham and Jacob both of them built the altars at Shechem and at Bethel later on we'll find it Genesis 12th chapter 7th verse 33rd chapter 20th verse and then again Genesis uh, you know 13th chapter 4th verse 35th chapter 1 the patriarchs worshiped in this manner first build the altar and offer you know the living one very interestingly moria becomes so central you know for the 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 process of worship abraham brings his son of course the jews claim is isaac and you know the whole controversy but then abraham brings isaac you know to offer him whichever was the beloved of abraham in genesis 22 and that was that the place which becomes so central to uh, you know the religion of uh, israel then later on you will find where god appeared to david also this uh, one chronicles 21st chapter it is the place exactly where king solomon builds the first temple you see the second book of chronicles third chapter and there is a worship worship god centeredness where you keep only god you will find that in the history of kings to begin with solomon and then you also see uh, you know hosea uh, reforms of hosea you will find that you know and he brings the centrality of worship on jerusalem there are sacred rituals which becomes a system of worship on the sacred place to begin with from moria mount moria and then the tabernacle comes into the you know finds a, a place and then the building of temple temple you will find you know repeatedly the praise in the temple in psalm 48 87 99 132 <laughs> especially in uh, you will find then psalm 78 somewhere Uh, 69th verse you see that the whole psalm you can read where he built his sanctuary a copy of the high heaven founding it firm as the earth forever see it gives understanding that it is the proto copy of the temple that you find in heaven is 
built on earth. Similar expressions are made in several other places. Friends, there was a tragedy that the first and later on which was rebuilt again, the second temples were destroyed. It's only in the kind of hatred towards the growing powerful Israel, mostly by the Babylonian, Assyrian uh, kings, and made Israel to go into diaspora, means the, they, are, they are spread everywhere. <coughs> the captivity, Babylonian captivity. So the destruction of the two temples, the captivity in Babylon, made a necessity of uh, you know, bringing an alternate, uh, alternative uh, arrangement like synagogue, where they don't offer anything there, like living uh, creatures, but the worship goes on. The necessity of synagogue, you'll find in Nehemiah 8th chapter. And uh, this synagogue worship, it helps them to bring people nearer to God. It served as a kind of what they call Beth Midrasha, means it is a kind of a, a school house where they learn first their language, Hebrew, they learn the Torah, and they learn to recite the Ten Commandments, etc., etc. Beth Midrasha. And of course, Jesus, even John the Baptist, were also the students of this kind of midrasha in the rabbinic schools where they learned Shama uh, is the uh, commandments. And Jesus did not reject either temple or synagogue. He was part and parcel because he went into synagogue, synagogues to read the scripture. And he went into the temple to discover what was happening around the holy place. He says, my father's place. The temple is my father's place. You are distorting the serenity and purity, if not the holiness of the temple. Friends, the climax of our understanding of worship we will find in the, in the, in the gospel according to St. John chapter 4 in a, one of the first ever long episodes in Bible uh, for a, engaged in the long discourse and dialogue between our Lord and this uh, Samaritan woman. Entire chapter, I think, uh, was dedicated to, uh, you know, in the dialogue with this, our discourse with this lady. But you will discover variety of truths in this, uh, particularly knowing about the definition, the meaning and nature of worship. And as that lady comes, when master was thirsty, and then when he asked her a drink, she said, you are a Jew and you ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Because they do not associate with Samaritans. Why? That's because you will find the reference in 2nd book of Kings, 17th chapter, verse 24. You will find uh, the uh, background of it when the Assyrians or the Babylonians came and invaded Israel and they took away all the best wise uh, artisans and skilled people into the captivity. And then they sent the best of the wisdom into this country even to find out whether there is any more wisdom left over in this country. Shows that God of Israel is so powerful and wise that he made these people very knowledgeable and wise. And then what happened? The people who remained here began to marry, uh, you know, the foreigners who came from Assyria. They have all merriments in this country. Whereas those people who went to Babylon, you know, as the captives, and they were trying to maintain, you know, the serenity, holiness in that land. And that's why you will find in Psalm 137, in the ballad of exiles, and they sing that Bonium has brought out this, you know, a kind of a, a very charismatic, uh, you know, singing, which became, for people who do not understand, 
a merriment, song of merriment, but it has a lot of passion and sorrow. Beside the streams of Babylon, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept at the memory of Zion, leaving our harps hanging on the poplars there. You know, these people are asking foreigners our songs of Zion to be sung for entertainment. How can we sing the songs of holiness and ascribe to only to, you know, holy God and give them to the kind of this ordinary people, a vandalization? We don't want to do that because we want to preserve and protect the purity of those songs because they are dedicated only to God, God alone. In that manner, these people preserved their faith and purity. And when they returned back after captivity, they found out the people remnant sitting here doing all kinds of merriment. So they got angry and they pulled out all these people and said, go to some other place. Our temple is only for those, you know, who maintain the purity. You lost that purity, so you create another temple. So they went to Gerizim to build their alternative temple. They are called Samaritans, original Jews, but they are mixed groups. And you will find in, you know, second book of Kings chapter 17 verse 24, the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kuta, Hawa, Hamath, and Sepharvaim, the five. These are the five gods. The Hebrew word, you know, Baal, singular, Baalim is plural, simply means three things. Number one, God. Number two, master. Number three, husband. God, master or Lord and husband. So in the conversation with Samaritan woman, he says in some context that when he promised the living waters here, she said, okay, give me some living water. He said, no, no, no. You go and bring your husband, Baal. We took it in that sense. But if you really go into the etymological and the linguistic context, you will find, and you are right to say, I have no husband, means no Baal. For although you have had five means, you lost your faith. You desecrated the purity of God in this land. You are so uh, kind of, uh, you have watered down the faith. And you have got five gods coming from, as referred by two book, second book of Kings, five gods, five balim, five husbands, five gods. And so you desecrated. I look into my translation in that way rather than looking into the, you know, kind of menial five husbands, rather five gods. But today whom you worship is not the proper God. Come, I will show you the real God. God, in verse 24, he says, God is spirit. And those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth is the climax and the crux of the long conversation that he made with that lady in spirit and in truth would not be light to I mean God is not here to limit himself to certain boundaries you will find the universality of the divinity he is neither here nor there neither in Jerusalem nor in Gerizim he transcends the barriers. He transcends in all kinds of human created kind of borders. Beyond the borders. And also beyond the material affirmations, material offerings. He looks into our heart. It is there in the interiority of your heart. As time and again I use the word in the cave of the heart. In the cave of the heart, you find that holiness, nothing but the holiness of God. And therefore, God would not be tied to either Mount Zion or to Gerizim, either to Jerusalem or to Gerizim. Neither here nor there. He is everywhere because he is spirit. God is spirit. Therefore, you worship him in spirit and in truth. A new spirituality. It is not to break the 
ongoing patterns of worship. It is not to deny the synagogical worship, but it is something that you find God within your heart. When you go to see Pauline language that Paul speaks in a much more you know, transparent language saying, don't you realize that your bodies are the temples of God, temple of God, and that the spirit of God lives in you. In the uh, Corinthians uh, uh, first chapter, he says that, you know, that chapter 6, uh, verse 19, your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You are owned by him. As Paul says that it is Jesus Christ by shedding of his blood on Calvary. He owned even your body. The body of, you know, God is nothing but the entire world, cosmos. That is why the cosmological worship has already been on. Sometimes, you know, we priests tend to say in the worship, let us begin the worship by singing so and so hymn. We are, who are we to begin the worship? Worship is on the last thousands of years from the time God has created the universe. We only can join all the animals, all the birds, all the plants, all the mountains. You will find again and again in Psalms like uh, you know, Psalm 19, Psalm 29, you know, everywhere all these Psalms, they, you know, they, they simply praise, praise and pay tribute to Yahweh, you sons of God, tribute to Yahweh of glory and power, tribute to Yahweh of the glory of his name, worship Yahweh in his sacred court. Where is that court? You will find in Psalm 29, the court is in waters, court is on the top of the mountains, and everywhere you will find, you know, God's presence. Friends, you will find the difference between the primordial nature of God, the consequential nature of God. In the primordial nature, I am who I am. I am not changed. I am still God. Zealous God. There is no other God. There is no other God. The centrality, sovereignty, supremacy, of God has to be respected for. You cannot bring somebody in my place because I am the one who created you even when you are in the womb of your mother. I am the one who brought you out of Egypt. I am the one who named you. Unchanged. Unchanged. In the consequential, of course, you find in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, it is in the form of Jesus, you have God within us. Friends, great you know, ascriptions, you will find great qualities of God through the history of the, you know, Israel and through the history of the church. We have recognized each of the prophet, each of the king, whoever have worshipped and has brought out one of the characteristic features of God the glory of God, the holiness of God, the power of God, the truth of God, the wisdom of God, the beauty of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the justice of God, the grace of God, and the eternal presence of God forever and ever and ever. I, I simply love to listen at least once a week, whenever I want my mind to be refreshed, I go into Handel's, you know, that great, you know, hymn he created, lyric he created, you know, a German from the book of Revelation, chapter 19. King of kings, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, great crowds singing, millions of people discovering God in his holy temple. Create temple within your heart. Create temple of God in your families. Create temple in the midst of your house, in the surroundings, and discover him. Yes, there is always when you go to the worship, at least in India, we know that, you know, all the nine things that they take, phalam, pushpam, toyam, patram, dhupam, you know, deepam, naivedyam, gandham, and all these things are taken to God. 
because the whole cosmos must be brought and you know dedicated and offered to god who is the creator we have to learn lessons from some of these faiths the whole creation a small piece of each creation is put before god saying that we are nobody we are nothing we are nil we are zero we are vacuum i think from this you know vacuum we need to create something we have to discover the presence of god no other god it is yahweh who is revealed in jesus christ in this cosmic worship jesus himself paul it was a tremendous you know translation of the figure of jesus as the representative of god he is the image of the unseen god and the first born of all creation for in him were created all things in heaven and on earth everything visible and invisible you know etc etc he says finally in colossians of course chapter 1 i am reading it verses 17 18 now the church is his body and he is its head in the worship you discover him you discover him it is no less than jesus the christ the messiah the abhishekta the lord of lords whom god has sent and then he promised and i will send my spirit to you and who will lead you guide you and reveal you you know the truth all truth he says the spirit and truth god is spirit god is spirit in spirit and truth therefore you worship him when he healed 10 lepers he said go show yourself in the temple he didn't deny the temple worship you know any one any one who came to him for the healing liberation from this you know the, the physical fetters he made 18 the woman who suffered 18 years you know as a bent woman he made her you know stretched her made her stand on her feet go and show yourself in the temple temple is the ultimate thing worship heavenward is the vertical way of looking into witness is the horizontal way you have to spread this you know you have to show your witness if you are a leper you are healed if you are a bent woman you are made strong straight you have to show yourself go show it to the priest there but go worship ultimately you should be grateful to god friends ultimate worship you find in the book of revelation as i told you from where this great hymn of uh, you know handles come listen to that hymn what a, an excitement and exhilaration jubilation we will get in listening to that you know revelation chapter 19 when someone knelt at his feet to worship him but he said to me don't do that i am a servant just like you and all brothers who are witnesses to jesus it is god that you must worship it is god that you must worship god alone is to be worshiped the witness jesus gave is the same as the spirit of prophecy in spirit and in truth no other name no other name and we have to prostrate before god shaka shaka in the in telugu and in sanskrit in my context sasthanga namaskara sasthanga is you lie down on the earth and then every limb of yours must be touched by the earth to show that you are nobody before god that is true worship worship begins from the holy feet of god the living god and it is neither here nor there he is there everywhere in spirit and in truth the worship is in spirit and in truth a new spirituality jesus christ has promised i give you peace and the spirit gives you peace let us receive that peace and experience in worshiping god you know there are variety of worships you know in the history of the christian church you said primordial church started you know the ancient worship is still preserved in the in the byzantine you know worship like third fourth centuries the first church you know worshiped and it continued in variety of forms you know 
I love St. James worship, you know, Gregorian music, you know, all chantings, you know, the worship has become so glorified. Let us join in such worship. In each of the family, you can create a small altar and then worship the Lord, prostrate, prostrate before him. I found out uh, one of the Sri Lankan, uh, uh, if I am not mistaken, I am subject to correction. It is, must be uh, composed by D.T. Niles and then translated by uh, Fred Khan. I think I will just sing one or two stanzas. Worship the Lord, worship the Father, the Spirit, the Son, raising our hands in devotion to Him who is one. Raising our hands as a sign of rejoicing, and with our lips are togetherness voicing, giving ourselves to a life of creativeness. Worship and work must be done. Worship the Lord, worship the Father, the Spirit, the Son. Now in response to the life you are giving, help us, O Father, to offer our living, seeking a just and a healing society. Worship and work must be done. Worship the Lord, worship the Father, the Spirit, the Son, raising our hands in devotion to Him who is one. It is in Jesus God liberates us. It is in Jesus Christ that He cleanses our sins in His blood. And it is in Jesus He makes you new. And let us join this experiencing the new spirituality in the you know, spirit that God has given to us, Holy Spirit, the Parakletos, and discover him within our spheres and prostrate Shaka, prostrate before him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Shall we pray? Lord, with whatever name we call you, Lord, it is insufficient and it is not complete, as we can see only in a limited sphere. We know you only in a very limited manner, and that too only through Jesus Christ, Lord. But give us such experience in your spirit, by your Holy Spirit. Lord, cleanse us and make us afresh. May we discover you within our hearts, O oh Lord, in the cave of our heart. And may we convert, may we convert our hearts as your temples and to worship you, Lord, to bring glory to you and to you alone. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, abide with you always. Amen.